How, what do you do when you go in the lab and and <laughs> look at this stuff? Because it it actually boggles my imagination. What you how you try to focus in on some component or area of the DNA. Yeah, you're right. The DNA is pretty long. You know how long it is? I'm not even going to guess. Sorry, I'll just <laughs> embarrass myself. It's uh, around two meters long, so six feet. Uh-huh. Yeah. And um, so can you guess how we can possibly pack it in uh, two micron, which is two millionth of a meter, which yeah. is the space where the DNA sits in the cell? Tightly coiled. Wow, you're prepared. <laughs> yeah, tightly coiled. It's like coiled. my phone cord, uh, tightly coiled. Yeah, just just a phone cord. cord. <laughs> and you know uh, how the phone cord of your cells is named, is called? The double helix. Double helix plus, plus. plus protein histones, uh-huh. which makes the chromatin. Okay. So chromatin is a very important concept in epigenetics. It's what the DNA sequence is in genetics. So it's a way of storing information. If you think about it, the, our DNA sequence stores the information, our genetic information, and our chromatin stores our epigenetic information. The point is that the DNA is so long, so we have to pack it around histones and make it very mm. compact in our cells in, in the form of chromatin. Now, in this form, we cannot read the genes. We cannot read the sequence and we cannot mm. make protein out of DNA. So what we have to do is to uh, open the chromatin to read the genes and close it back to turn genes off. Okay. And this is what epigenetic marks do. They uh-huh. open the chromatin and allowing turn, expression. Okay. Yeah, turn genes on and close the chromatin and turn genes off. And these are uh, what all these witches do. So wait, let me ask a follow-up question. Do you rec- so epigenetics isn't required to open the chromatin? It's just one way to open the chromatin. Is that a fair question? Yeah, it is. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so it's um, one way of um, of opening the chromatin. Uh, there are trans- transcription factors, which mm-hmm. are um, basically gene reading machineries in our cells uh, that that do that. Um, uh, but ep- epigenetic. Uh, so the difference between. Uh, epigenetic mechanism and the other gene regulation mechanism, mechanisms is that epigenetic mechanism can be inherited through cell division. So, and this is the point. So, um, you know, when, when one cell divides, it duplicates the DNA and then gives rise to daughter cells. Now, the epigenetic uh, mechanism can be copied to the daughter cells, so they are stable through cell division. Whereas the other mechanism of gene regulations that are regulated by other enzymes or protein are not Mm. copied to the daughter cells. So this is what makes um, epigenetic mechanisms different. Okay, thanks. Let's go towards where we're headed. So some of the possibilities are you have found some modification of the genome, some epigenetic modification uh, that allows us to move forward with personalized medicine and say, you should be on this kind of diet or you should be on the other kind of diet. Um, But we do have another possibility, which is um, by going on one of those diets, they changed some methylating or other marker and it's not actually a cause it's a consequence. Yeah, you. But I think epigenetics is putting personalized medicine, uh, um, yeah, at the forefront. New of, tools. Yeah, genes alone are not enough to explain what what make us unique, and so are not enough in personalized medicine. Actually, you know, Christopher. You and me, we are 99.9% identical DNA-wise. I thought we were practically twins (laughs) when I saw you. Your hair's a little curlier than mine. For those 
who can't see her hair on the radio. <laughs> The yeah, this is a shocking. So this one of the shocking surprise from the Human Genome Project. So after uh, sequencing all the ge- all uh, the human genome, scientists were shocked. Uh, one of the shocking surprise was yeah that people on average have uh, one difference, one nucleotide difference. So only one letter of the DNA every. 1,000 letters. So this is only 0.1% of our (coughs) DNA that is different. And the second surprise, as you mentioned, only 2% of our DNA codes for proteins, so it's our genes. And the third shocking surprise, we have about the same number of genes as a worm, a a mouse, fruit flies, and 50 times less than an onion. Is this scary? Yeah. Oh, no, I never heard that yeah. one before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there must <coughs> be something else that, that, that explains what makes us human and what makes us unique. And I believe that uh, epigenetics holds the key uh, for this. So I'm, I'm very, very excited. Um, in working um, with you in this field. And I think also epigenetics is, a, is something that can empower people to take action on their health. 